Hello students, welcome at uh, Matrix High School YouTube channel. We are going to hear the discussion of MOF paper and I am here to discuss the solution of physics paper. So let's see the question one by one. That is our first question. In first question, three uh, situations are given and we have to tell what that combination is just called. If I am talking about the first, uh, in first that first object is sun and that middle one is moon and then the last one is earth. And in second combination that the first one is moon and then middle one is sun and then last one is earth. And in uh, third co combination that first object is sun and then middle one is earth and then last one is moon. Okay. Let's see the question number first. What will be the first combination create? Let's see. In first combination the first object is sun then middle object is moon and then last object is just earth. Okay. Uh, this situation the sunlight is just blocked by the surface of moon. So, the shadow of that moon is formed on the surface of the earth and this combination is known as solar eclipse. So, for our first question our answer will be A. Now, come to the question number second. Uh, what will be the second combination create? In second combination first object is moon then sun and then earth. We know that uh, moon re uh, revolves around the earth but for the sun that is not possible to move around the uh, earth because it uh, uh, does not fix in the in the orbit of the earth. So, for this our answer will be C option because that condition will be not possible. Now, come to the question number 3. In question number 3 what will be the third combination create? Let us see the third combination what is this. First object is sun then middle one is earth and then the last one is moon. Okay. See, uh, this one is sun, then this is earth and then last one that is moon. Okay. So, the sunlight is just blocked by the surface of earth. So, the shadow is formed on the surface of the moon and this condition is known as lunar eclipse. For third question, our answer will be B option. Now, come to the question number fourth. Okay. Wax candle is an example of light source. First, uh, that is, it is natural, then artificial, then it's non-luminous, and then gas discharge. Okay, let's see. If I'm talking about the natural source of light, this source of light just uh, occurs in nature, like sun, stars. All these are the example of natural source of light. And if I'm talking about the artificial source of light, these sources are just made by human beings, like electric bulb. And if I'm talking about the non-luminous sources of light. So, these sources does not have their own light, they just reflect the light, they just uh, falls on their surface and these type of sources are known as non luminous sources. So, for wax candle, human made source of light and for fourth question our answer will be B option. Okay, now come to the question number 5. Which of the following shapes uh, contains maximum volume for the storing water? Okay, the first that is cuboid, then second shape is cylindrical, then cube and then spare. If I am talking about the storage, then we have to find out the value, uh, the volume of all these shape. If I am talking about the volume of cuboid, then what is the volume of cuboid? That is length into width into height. And what is the value for this? That length is 3a then breadth is 2a and then height is a. Just multiply 3a into 2a then a. This will be 6a cube. So, the volume for that cuboid will be 6a cube. Now, what is our second step that is cylinder and if I am talking about the volume of cylinder then volume of cylinder is pi r square h. And the radius for the cylinder is a and that height is given 3a. Just put the values. Then pi r square a square into 3a. 3.14 into 3a cube. This will be 9.42 a cube. And third shape that is cube. So, what is the volume for cube that is? side cube. So, and the side of that cube is 2a. So, 2a cube. 
and it will be 8 a cube and our fourth step that is spare what is the volume for spare that is 4 by 3 pi r cube 3.14 and the radius of that spare is a a cube then we got 4.17 a cube so just compare the volume of all these spare that is 6 a cube then this is 9.42 a cube and then this is 8 a cube and this is 4.17 a cube and we have to uh, find the maximum value and maximum value among these uh, steps that will has cylindrical set so for this question our answer will be b option okay now come to the question number 6 a, a sundial is being used for telling uh, the time on a very cloudy afternoon. What is the time shown on the sundial? Okay. Sundial, uh, it is an instrument that is used to find the time. Okay. And it, it just tell the time with the help of some shadow. And if there is a cloudy day, then there will be no shadow formed on the uh, clock. So, it will be not able to tell the time. So, sundial will not be able to tell the so, for sixth question, our answer will be D option. Let us come to the question number seven. People uh, sitting on a ferry's wheels are experiencing this type of motion. So, in a uh, ferry's wheel, that ferry's wheel just doing a uh, rotational motion, but the people that are sitting on that ferry's wheel just experiencing circular motion. So, for this question, our answer will be C option. Okay, thank you. Hello, students. Today we will discuss about MOF solution of class 6th subject chemistry. Our first question is which of the following sequence is correct in making fiber? Option A weaving, ginning, spinning. Option B ginning, spinning, weaving. Option C spinning, weaving, ginning and option D ginning, weaving, spinning. First of all, there are three terms that is weaving, ginning and spinning. What are the meaning of these three terms? Weaving, spinning and ginning. Ginning is a process of separation of cotton seeds and spinning is a process of making yarn from fiber and weaving when we use two set of yarn, we weave the yarn into fabric. So here the correct sequence is ginning, spinning then weaving. Ginning, spinning then weaving. So option B is correct here. Now look at the next question, which of the following statement is true about rearing of silk worm? Option A, the rearing of silk worm for obtaining silk is called silk, which is incorrect. Option B, the rearing of silk worm for obtaining silk is called cocoon, which is also incorrect. Option C, the rearing of silk worm for obtaining silk is called sericulture. Absolutely correct answer. So, option C is correct here. Now, the next question is, purpose of sorting materials into group is option A, to study their properties, option B, convenience, option C, both A and B and option D, mud. Mud is incorrect here. Option A and B are correct here. So, option C is correct both B, A and B. Now, the next question is an oily thin paper sheet will be option A transparent, option B translucent, option C opaque and option D cannot be predicted. Transparents are the material which completely pass the light and translucents are the materials which partially pass the light whereas opaque are the material which do not pass the light. So, an oily thin paper is an example of translucent material. Option B is correct here. Now, the next question is match the following items given in list 1 with that in list 2. In list 1, oily paper sheet, sugar and salt, gold and silver, wood. And in list 2, metallic luster, translucent, opaque and soluble in water. So, oily paper sheet is an example of translucent material. Sugar and salts are soluble in water. Gold and silver are metallic luster. And wood is example of opaque. So here, option C is correct. The next question is, 
जूट फाइबर आर ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम ऑप्शन ए स्टेम ऑफ जूट प्लांट ऑप्शन बी सीड्स ऑफ जूट प्लांट ऑप्शन सी फ्रूट ऑफ जूट प्लांट और ऑप्शन डी नन ऑफ दीज एज वी ऑल नो डेट जूट फाइबर्स आर ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम द स्टेम ऑफ द जूट प्लांट सो ऑप्शन ए इज करेक्ट हेयर थैंक यू हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टूडे आई विल डिस्कस द एम ऑफ पेपर सोल्यूशन ऑफ क्लास सिक्स साइंस पार्ट थ्री बायोलॉजी और फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज मैच द फॉलोइंग आइटम्स इवन इन द लिस्ट वन एंड लिस्ट टू लिस्ट वन डियर मैन फीमेल मॉस्किटो बटरफ्लाई लिस्ट टू बोथ प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स नेक्टर प्लांट्स एंड ह्यूमन ब्लड फर्स्ट एज वी ऑल नो दैट डियर इज ए हर्ब्यूरस एनिमल्स विच ईट प्लांट्स so our first option will be p is matching with the plants second man man is a omnivorous animals it eats both plants as well as animals so second will be q is equal to first female mosquito is a carrier of malaria so it is a human blood next option is butterfly butterfly is a agent which carry the germs from one place to other place it is a nectar so our options are p is equal to 3 in the given options p is equal to given is given in three options as we can see the second option q is equal to first q is equal to first is given in only option number a so our correct answer is option a next question is which of the following plants store food in their roots we have to find out in which one of the following plant root is act as a storage first option is sweet potato second is brinjal third is guava and last is none of these as we all know that sweet potato stores their food in the roots of the their plant our next question is given below are the names of the some animals which one of the above animals form a pair of omnivorous we have to find out who which one of them are omnivorous as we all know that human beings are omnivorous and we all know that cockroach is also a omnivorous goat is a herbivorous and eagle is a carnivorous so we our correct option will be second and third it is seen in the option b so our correct answer is option b next question is starch can be tested by using we have to select out which one of the following correct option is for the testing of starch as you all know that iodine solution is used for the testing of starch so our correct answer is iodine solution next question is which of the following food items contain carbohydrate gram pulses rice and cabbage as you all know that gram is a source of proteins pulses are also source of proteins cabbage is a source of minerals and vitamins and rice is the source of a carbohydrate so our correct answer is rice now next question is which of the following is necessary to make hemoglobin present in the rbc red blood cells iodine red phosphorus iron and sodium as we all know that hemoglobin is the main component of our blood in which we have found iron is the most important element of the hemoglobin so our correct answer is iron now next question is night blindness is caused due to the deficiency of as you all know that night blindness is a deficiency disease which caused due to vitamin a vitamin b vitamin c and d these are the options which we have given in the question so correct answer is vitamin a and vitamin b causes disease beriberi and vitamin c causes scurvy disease and vitamin d causes rickets disease thank you all hello everyone let's begin with the part 4 mathematics of matrix olympiad paper let's begin with the first question the difference between the place values of 6 and 3 in 256839 is now we have to find out the difference between these two number now the place value of 6 in this number is 
and the place value of 3 in this number is 30. Now we have to find out the difference between these two numbers. Now we can say that the difference between these two numbers is 5970. So according to the options, option D is the correct answer. Now let's solve next question. The smallest number which when rounded off to the nearest hundred as 600 is. We have to find out the smallest number. Which when rounded off to the nearest hundred will give us 600. So let's check the option. According to the option we can say that here 550 is the smallest number. Which when rounded off to the nearest 100 will give us 600. So here option A is the correct answer that is 550. Now the next question is the difference between the greatest and the smallest number which when rounded off a number to the nearest 100 as 6. 1700. So, we have to find out the difference between the greatest and the smallest number. 6700 is. So, for this, the smallest number is 6,650 and the greatest is 6,749. So, now we have to find out the difference between these two terms. 6,749 minus 6,650. Here we get 99. So, option B is the correct answer. Now, let us solve question number 24. Which of the following is meaningless? Now, we have to find out the meaningless term out of these four options. So, here uh, this means this is 22, this is sensible, this is your 12. Now, here we can see that according to the rules, we cannot repeat symbol V twice or thrice. We say that the symbol V is only used once in a number. So, here option C is meaningless out of these four options. So, here we can say that option C is the correct answer for the question number 24. Now, question number 25 is the average page of a book contains 259 words. Estimate rounding each number to the nearest 100. Now, we have to estimate this number 259. We have to estimate this number rounding of nearest 100. If we do the nearest 100 of 259, we get 300 here. The total number of words contained on 212 pages. Now, the next number is 212. So, the round of this 212 is 200. So, the average words on a page of a book is 259 and the total number of pages are 212. We have to find out the total number of words. For this, we have to do the multiplication of 259 and 212. So, after ra rounding off to the nearest 100, we get 300 and 200. So, the product of 300 and 200 is 60,000. So, here option B is the correct answer. Now, the next question is 26. The maximum possible difference between the four digit number formed by using the four different digits 1, 2, 3, 5 is. Now, first of all, we have to form the greatest 
number by using these four different digits. So, greatest number is 5321. So, we can say that 5321 is the greatest four digit number formed by using these four different digits. Now, the smallest four digit number is 1235. Now, we have to find out the maximum possible difference between these four digit number. Now, what we are going to do? We are going to simply subtract these two numbers and find out the difference. So, the difference is 4086. So, according to the options, we can say that option A is the correct answer. Now, the next question is, how many natural numbers up to 150 are divisible by 7? We have to find out the natural numbers up to 150 only which are divisible by 7. For that, what we are going to do? We are going to simply write down the natural numbers which are divisible by 7. So, it is 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, so on, 70, 7 times 20 is 140 and after that 7 times 21 is 147. So, 147 is the last natural number below 150 which is divisible by 7. So, we can say that here 21 natural numbers are the up to 150 which are divisible by 7. As we know that 1 times 7 is 7, 2 times 7 is 14, 3 times 7 is 21, 4 times 7 is 28 and so on till 21 times 7 is 147. So, here option A is the correct answer. The next question is in a problem involving division. Now, here is a problem related to the division part. Division, the divisor is 8 times the quotient. Now, the divisor is 8 times the quotient. We are writing quotient by Q and 4 times the remainder. Now, the same divisor is 4 times the remainder. Remainder we are denoting by R. If the remainder is 12, now we are given with the remainder. So, we can write here 4 multiply by 12 that is 48. So, we get the divisor that is 48. Then the dividend is. We have to find out the dividend. Now, for finding out the dividend, we use the formula. Dividend is equal to divisor multiply by quotient plus remainder. So, here we have to find out the dividend. Now, we are given with the divisor that is 48. Now, quotient. So, from this, we are going to find out the quotient. We are going to put the value of 48 in place of divisor. So, here Q will be 48 divided by 8 that is 6. So, quotient is 6 and remainder is 12. So, after solving this, we get 288 plus. So, we get the answer 300. So, here the dividend is 300. So, option A is the correct answer. Now, the next one is 
द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द प्रोड्यूसर द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द प्रोड्यूसर मीन्स लेस वन एंड सक्सेसर मीन्स एडिशन ऑफ वन ऑफ एन ऑड नेचुरल नंबर इज ऑलवेज डिविजिबल बाय नाउ हेयर वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट द प्रोड्यूसर एंड सक्सेसर ऑफ एन ऑड नंबर सो लेट्स टेक एन ऑड नंबर Three successor and producer of this three is producer of three is two successor of three is four. Now the product of successor and producer of an odd number. So the product of these two number is eight. Is always divisible by. Now we have to check. the product of successor and producer of this odd number here we are taken with the example 3 3 is an odd number so producer of 3 is 2 successor of 3 is 4 so the product of these two term is 8 now this number should be divisible by which number now options are 2 4 6 and 8 Let's take one more example. Let's take an odd number five. Producer of five is four. Successor of five is six. So the product of these two number is twenty-four. Now we are given with the product twenty-four. Now we have to find out twenty-four is divisible by which of the given option. So here according to the question product of the producer and successor of an odd number is always divisible by 8 we will choose option 8 why the reason behind 8 is 8 is a multiple of 2 and 4 uh, since 8 is a multiple of 2 and 4 so the numbers which are divisible by 8 will definitely be divisible by 2 and 4 also so this is the basic reason behind choosing the option number 8 now the next question the product of a whole number other than 0 and its successor is so now we have to find out the product of a whole number other than 0 let it be whole number Two and its successor. So its successor is three. And we have to find out the product of these two number. That is six. Let's take one more example. Let's take three. Successor of three is four, and the product of three and four is twelve. So here, what we have to find out the product of a whole number other than zero and its successor is. always an even number now you can see that here 6 is an even number 12 is an even number so odd number option is cancelled out divisible by 4 6 is not divisible by 4 so option c is also cancelled out now the last option is option d let's take more example and uh, let's check it once it's 20 so 20 is not divisible by 3 so option d is also invalid so here option a is the correct answer as all the three examples have given the product as an even number now question number 31 how many whole numbers are there between 400 37 and 487 now we have to find out the total numbers or whole numbers between these two numbers so what is the formula that we are going to use we are going to subtract the number 487 and 437 we are going to subtract these two numbers and whatever the answer will come we are going to subtract one from that number also so here after subtracting these both number we get the difference of 50 after 
subtracting 1 from 50, we get 49. So, there are 49 numbers in between 437 and 487. So, here option B is the correct answer. Now, let's move on to the next question. Which of the following will not represent 0? Now, here we have to find out the number which is not representing 0 in the option. So, here 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 multiplied by 0 gives us 0. The second option, 0 multiplied by 0 is 0. Now here, 2, 2 and 2 minus 2 is 0. So, this we can write down and define. As 0 is in the denominator form, so this expression is known as undefined. Here, 2 minus 2 is 0 upon 2, which gives us 0. So, here out of these four options, only option C is the correct answer as it is not representing answer 0. Now, the next question is, what least value should be given to star so that the number 6,34,200 star 1 is divisible by 3. Now here we have to find out the least number which should be given or which should be added to the given number so that it is divisible by 3. Now according to the divisibility rule the number 6, 3, 4, 2 plus star plus 1 give the sum as 16 plus star. Now here let us check option A first. 16 plus 0 is equal to 16. So, 16 is not divisible by 3. So, option A is not correct. Let us check option B. 16 plus 1 gives us 17. So, option B is also incorrect because 17 is not divisible by 3. Now, next is 16 plus 2. So, it will give us 18. So, we can say that 18 is divisible by 3. So, option C is the correct answer. Now, let us check option D also. 16 plus 3 which gives us 19. So, this option is also invalid. So, we can say that option C is the correct answer. Now, let us come to the next question. Question number 34. The ratio of two numbers is 3 ratio 4. We are given with the two numbers that are in the ratio form and the LCF is 4. They are LCM. We have to find out the LCM. For LCM, we are given with the formula LCM is equal to product of two numbers product of two numbers upon SCF. So, first of all we have to find out the numbers. The numbers are 3 ratio 4 and to find out the accurate number, we are going to multiply the HCF with this both number. So, here number 1 is 3 multiplied by 4 which gives us 12 and the second number will be 4 multiplied by 4 that is 16. So, the two numbers are 12 and 16. HCF is 4. Now, doing the lowest term, we get... 12 multiplied by 4 that is 48. So, the LCM of 12 and 16 is 48. So, option D is the correct answer. Now, the next question is 35 that is the sum of the prime numbers between 60 and 75 is. So, first of all we have to find out the prime numbers between 60 and 75. So, the prime numbers are 61, 67, 
71 and 73. So, these are the four prime numbers. So, here we have to find out the sum. For sum, what we have to do? We have to add all these four numbers to find out the sum of these prime numbers. So, after adding these four numbers, we get 272 as the answer. So, here option D is the correct answer. Let's move on to the next question. Question number 36. Now, in this question, prime numbers are used to help keep messages sent over the internet private. One step in the process involves multiplying two prime numbers. Here, the clue is given to us. First step is the process which involves multiplying two numbers. Now, here we have to find out the prime number which is used to produce key n here. Which number could be n? Now, we have to find out the number n. Now, the number n is a number which is used or we can say that which is used to help to keep messages. Okay. Now, here we have to find out out of these four options by using this hint that is multiplying two prime numbers. We have to find out the multiple of two prime number. So, here let's uh, take 27 first. Uh, 27 by doing the prime factorization, we can say that 27 is the product of 3. Now, the next option is 29. 29 is the prime number. So, we can say that 1 multiplied by 29. Next option is 31. 31 we can write down 1 multiplied by 31 and 33. It can be written as 3 multiplied by 11. So, in the hint, it is clearly given that it is a multiple of 2 prime numbers. So, here out of these four options, here option D is only there with the two prime numbers that is 3 and 11. Now, the next question is, how many numbers are there between 333 and 666 which are divisible by 5? Now, here we have to find out the numbers between 333 and 666 which are divisible by 5. So, for the divisibility rule of 5, we can say that the first number will be 335 and the last number here is 665 which is divisible by 5. Now, we have to find out how many numbers are there in between these two numbers. So, first we are going to take the difference between these two numbers. So, the difference between these two numbers is 330. So, there are 330 numbers there in between 665 and 335. Now, we are going to divide 330 by 5. So, here we get 66. So, there are 66 total numbers which, which are divisible by 5. Now, here we have to add 1 in 66 to include number 665 also. So, here at the end we are getting the answer 67. So, there are 67 numbers now here in the option A. Option A is the correct answer. Here, total number of 67 numbers are there in between 333 and 666. There are 67 numbers which are divisible by 5. So, option A is the correct answer. The next question is, the least number which must be subtracted from 6708 to make it exactly divisible by 9 is. So, according to the divisibility rule of 9, we are going to add all the digits here. So, first of all, 
let's add the digit 6 plus 7 plus 0 plus 8. So here we get the sum as 21. So after adding all this digit we get 21 total sum. Now what we have to do we have to find out the least number which must be subtracted from this number to make it exactly divisible by 9. So let's subtract the number from 21. So 21 minus 1 will give us 20 that is not divisible by 9. And the next number 21 minus 2 we get 19. It is again not divisible by 9. Now here 21 minus 3 is 18. So option C is correct as 18 is divisible by 9. And here in the last option let's check it is 17. It is not divisible by 9. So, according to the option, we can say that option C is the correct answer. Now, let us move on to the next question. Next question is, how many circles can be drawn to pass through three non-collinear points? So, there is only and only one circle that can pass through three non-collinear co points. So, here option A is the correct answer. Now, the next question is, if a bicycle wheel has 48 spokes then the angle between a pair of two consecutive spoke is now we know that bicycle wheel is in a circular shape so here the angle of a circular shape is 360 degree so we can say that so we are going to divide 600 360 by 48. So, after dividing this, we get 7.5. So, the angle between two consecutive spoke is 7.5 and 7.5 can be written as 7 1 by 2. So, according to the question, option B is the correct answer. Now, the next question. Number of lines passing through 5 points such that no 3 of them are collinear is. Now, we have to find out the number of lines. So, here let us take 5 points 1, 2, 3, 4 and let it be 5 and also name them A, B, C, D and E. So, these are the 5 points. Now, we know that we need two points to form a line. So, here let us join the points and see how many lines we are going to form with these five points. One, this is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9 and this is and this is 10. So, option A is the correct answer as there are total number of 10 lines passing through these 5 points. Now, the next question is 42. If the sum of two angle is equal to an obtuse angle. Now, what you have to find out? If the sum of two angles is equal to an obtuse angle then which of the following is not possible we have to find out the possibility which is not sum of two angle equal to an obtuse angle so here let's check the option a one obtuse angle and one acute angle so it can be possible it can give the sum equal to obtuse angle. Second is a right angle means one right angle and one acute angle. It can also possible. Option C is two acute angle. Yes, they can also form an obtuse angle. If we add two acute angle and the last option is 
two right angles. No, this option is not valid for the uh, situation that two angles, the sum of two angle is 180 and 180 degree is not an obtuse angle. It, it is an straight angle. So, 180 is not an obtuse angle. As an obtuse angle is greater than 90 degree but less than 180 degree. So, here two right angles are forming 180 degree. So, this condition is not possible for the question. So, option D is the correct answer. Now, the next question 43 is a polygon has prime number of sides. Its number of side is equal to the sum of the two least consecutive primes. The two least consecutive prime is 2 and 3. So, we have to find out the sum of these 2 and 3. It means it is 5. The number of diagonals of the polygon is. We have to find out the number of diagonals of this polygon. Now, our polygon is 5 sided figure. So, we are going to use the formula n, n minus 3 upon 2. So, by putting the value of n, that is 5, 5 minus 3 upon 2, we get 5 multiply by 2 upon 2, that is equal to 5. So, here, Option B is the correct answer as there are total number of 5 diagonals found by this polygon. Now, the next question is, if x is a negative integer then, means if x is a negative integer, so if it is a negative, negative plus absolute value of this negative integer will be positive. So, it will give us 0. If we check the next option, negative x, negative, absolute value of x will be positive. So, negative, negative will become the positive. So, here it will not give us 0. So, this option is incorrect. Negative plus positive results 2x. This equation is also not correct and last option is x means negative term minus absolute value of negative will give us negative 2x. So, this equation is also not correct. So, according to the option we can say that option A is the correct option. Now, the next question is Amulya and Amar visited two places A and B respectively in Kashmir and recorded the minimum temperature on a particular day as minus 4 degree Celsius at A and minus 1 degree Celsius at B. Which of the following statement is true? Now, we have to find out out of these four options which statement is true. Now, first option is A is cooler than B. A is cooler than B means minus 4 degree is cooler than minus 1 degree Celsius. Yes, it is true. So, we can say that the first statement is true. The second statement is B is cooler than A. B means minus 4 degree is cooler than minus minus 1 degree Celsius is cooler than minus 4 degree Celsius. No, it is not correct because minus 1 degree Celsius is greater than minus 4 degree Celsius. So, this statement is false. Next is, there is a difference of 2 degree Celsius in the temperature. No, it is not correct as the difference in between this is not 2 degree Celsius, it is more than that. Minus 4 degree Celsius, minus minus 1 degree Celsius will give us 
minus 3 degree Celsius. So, statement C is false. Now, the last statement. The temperature of A is 4 degree Celsius higher than that at B. It is also a false statement. So, according to the option, only option A is the correct answer. So, the next question is, for a non-zero integer A, which of the following is not defined? Here, we have to find out, out of these four options, which is not defined term. Now, here, we can easily observe and say that option A is the correct answer as A divided by 0 is not defined term. This is a direct question. Now, the next question is, which of the following describe the absolute value of minus 2 degree? So, here, the first option is, it is the distance from minus 2 to 2 on the thermometer. So, if we talk about the absolute value of minus 2, say that minus 2, minus 2, here we get absolute value, this is 4. So, this is statement is not correct. Second is, it is the distance from minus 2 to 0, minus 2, to 0 we get 2. So, absolute value of minus 2 degree is 2 which is shown in the option number B. The next option is it is the actual temperature outside when the thermometer reads minus 2 degree. This option is not correct. Now, the last option is none of these describe the absolute value of minus 2. No, this is also not correct. So, option B is the correct answer as the absolute value of negative 2 degree is positive 2 degree that is in option B. So, option B is the correct answer. Now, the next question is 48 on the number line the integer 5 is located. So, let us draw number line 0. Here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. On the right side we have positive number, on the left side we have negative number. So, here it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here it is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 and minus 5. Now, we are talking about the positive 5 which is here on the number line. Now, let us check the options. Option A is to the left of 0, to the left of 0. No, this option is not correct as this is the left side and this is the right side. So, 5 is not to the left of 0, it is right of the 0. So, to the right of the 0, yes, this option is correct. C option is to the left of 1. No, this is also not correct. Because left side is in this side and uh, 5 is on the right side of 1. Option D is to the left of minus 2. No, this option is not correct. So, according to the question, option B is the correct answer. Now, question number 49. Which expression is represented by the module? So, this is the module and we have to find out the expression which best suits to the module. So, first of all, let us study the module. What it says, 0 to the left hand side. Now, from the 0, the line is moving towards the left direction, means on the negative side. Uh, how much distance it is covering? It is covering, it is covering up 5 units. So, here you can say that minus 5. So, it is a negative 5. Now, after negative 5, it is moving towards the right hand direction. Now, how much unit it is moving towards right side? It is 1, 2, 3 and this is 4. So, this is moving in 
to the positive four direction. So the expression that best suits to this module is option D that is negative 5 positive 4. Now the last question is a student gets 4 marks for a correct answer. Student gets 4 marks now here for the correct answer and 1 marks is deducted for a wrong answer. If she has attempted 80 questions at all and she has got only 240 marks, the number of correct answers she has attempted is. Now, now we have to find out the total number of correct answers she has attempted. So, for the correct answer, let's take variable x. So, there are total number of x questions that she has attempted. Correct. Now for the incorrect answers, let it be 80 minus x. Why we are taking 80 minus x? Because total number of questions she has attempted is 80. So we are taking incorrect answer as 80 minus x. So for every correct answer, she is going to be awarded 4 marks. So here we are going to multiply for the correct answer. 4 marks. Now, incorrect answers, she is going to be deducted 1 marks. So, 1 marks deduction is for the wrong answer. Now, we are going to multiply this minus 1 by 80 minus x. Now, total marks is 240. Let's form equation 4x minus 80 minus x equal to 200. 40. Let's solve it. We get 5x equal to 240 plus 80 which will give us 320 by 5. So, the value of x will be 320 by 5. Now, after doing the lowest form, we get 64. So, there are total number of 64 questions which she have attempted correctly. So, we have to find out only the correct answers. So, there are 64 answers that are correct. So, option C is the correct answer. Thank you. Hello, my dear students. My name is Akash Chaudhary. I am your reasoning mentor. Today we are discussing Matrix Olympiad Papers Class 6 Part 5th of Logical Reasoning. Let me start question number 1st. As you see the question, question number 1st says, find the next term of 2, 4, 8, 16, what is the next term for this given series. As you see, 2 into 2, 4, 4 into 2, 8. 8 into 2, 16, then 16 into 2, 32, 32 is our answer. Option A is correct answer. Next question is, find the next term A, D, G, J, what is the next term? As you see, A is the first, fourth, seventh, tenth, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3. If we add 3 in 10, then we got 13. 13 means M. M is our answer. Option B is correct answer. Our next question is, Raman walk 6 km south. As you see, our direction is east, west, north and south. Raman walk 6 km south. Raman walk 6 km south. And then turns left and walk 4 km. He turns left and walk 4 km. Again turns left and walk 5 km. In which direction he is, he is facing now? His face is this direction and this is called, this is called north. Our answer is north direction. Option C is correct answer. Next question is, question number 54. 
अरुण स्टार्ट फ्रॉम अ स्कूल एंड वॉक टू किलोमीटर टुवार्ड्स नॉर्थ अरुण वॉक्स टू किलोमीटर इन नॉर्थ देन ही टर्न राइट एंड वॉक फाइव किलोमीटर देन अगेन ही टर्न राइट एंड वॉक टू किलोमीटर He then again turns right and walk two kilometer. This person is here. How far is from his school? His school distance is there. This distance is school bit and starting point. If this distance is five, this is all. Sorry, this is distance is two. This is also two. If this is five, this is total is also five. If this distance, this part of this distance is two. then remaining distance is 3 our answer is 3 km option b is correct answer next question is question number 55 urmila has 23rd rank from the right and 15th rank from the left how many persons are there as you know number of total person formula is right plus left minus 1 23rd from right plus 15th from left minus 1 23 plus 15 is 38 minus 1 is equal to 37 our answer is 37 option a is correct answer next question is if plus means into into means minus minus means divide divide means plus then solve 30 minus minus means divide divide 10 Divide means divide means plus plus seven and plus means into into five. If thirty is divided by ten, three plus seven into five. Seven into five, thirty-five plus three is equal to thirty-eight. Our answer is option B is correct answer. Next question is question number fifty-seven. What is the value of forty-eight in bracket minus twelve divided by four plus six divided two into three? According to Bodmer's rule, we solve first bracket. Forty-eight minus twelve is thirty-six divided four plus six divided two into three. Then we divide. We solve firstly divide. 36 divided by 4 then 9 is plus 6 is divided by 2 then 3 into 3 3 into 3 9 9 plus 9 is equal to 18 our answer is 18 option c is correct answer next question is find the mirror image of this image is circle so here and square so here which image is the same option b is correct answer Next question is find the water image of teacher. If we find the water image of teacher this way, T A S O in reverse, T E A this way opposite, and C H E and R is so this way. Our answer is T E A C H E T. E A C H E R option C is correct answer. Next question is paper folding. If this paper is folded this side and this is folded this side, if we open this paper, we open this side. Then cut is so here. If we this, this paper is unfolded from upper side this way, and then means square form option B is correct answer. Thank you.